So now we've registered our player listener class and it's time to make the player listener class. So we're done with this class, the main class. So just save and then right click the package me.urign.doorlock and then choose new and then class. And we're going to call our class player listener. Okay, with that newly created class, we're going to um, use it to detect when the player interacts with the door. First thing we should probably do is define a variable that lets us access variables from the door lock class. To do this, we're just going to do public door lock plugin. There you go. That's the first variable that we need to find. Um, basically, that just means door lock or plugin is short for door lock, which you may think is just a little bit unnecessary. But um, I just find it a little bit more organized to do it this way. Um, you may not, but uh, that's just how I'm going to be doing this. Uh, underneath that, we are going to contact the log once more. To do that, let's just go ahead and copy the logger line from our main class that we entered in at the very beginning and paste it into our player listener class. Um, underneath that, we are going to handle the interaction with the door. So we're going to type at event handler, so the event, and then we're going to type underneath that public void on player interact. Can't spell today. Within parentheses, we're also going to type player interact event event, and then an opening curly bracket. Okay, so let's import player interact event from bucket. And then let's import the event handler from bucket. So it should look just like this. Um, so now we're saying when a player interacts with an object. So this is any object right now, um, which we will narrow down to a door in a moment. So let's just go ahead and get the variable stated for the player that's interacting. So we don't have to type um, a long bit of code every time we want to get the player performing the event. So let's just call the player P. So do player p equals event dot get player. So let's import player from bucket. And now instead of typing event dot get player every time, we only have to type p, which is of the type player. Underneath that, we're going to type block block equals event dot get clicked block. All right, so pretty self-explanatory, but I'll explain it anyways in case you might be a little bit lost. Um, block is just short for event get clicked block, which is the block being clicked by the player. Um, we're also going to want to get the block above the block being clicked. Why might you ask? Is um, let's say it's a block underneath the door, and the player is trying to break that block so that the door breaks. Um, we want to be able to see if the the door is above that block and prevent this from happening. So we're just going to do location block above location equals block dot get location. Um, instead of adding a semicolon, we're going to type dot add parentheses zero comma one comma zero. And then we finish it off with a semicolon. And then you can import location from bucket. OK, so what we just did is we got the location of the block being clicked. And we added one integer, or an integer of one to the y coordinate, which is the middle one, x, y, z. So we added one, so now we have the location of the block above the block being clicked. Um, this is still returning an error. Hold on, let me just make sure. Oh, I did get clicked blocked. Make sure it says get clicked block, not get clicked block. I need to fix this kind of weird highlighting thing. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. OK, that's better. Okay, so um, back to this. So it should say player p equals event dot get player player or block block equals event dot get clicked block not blocked like I had typed. Um, and then we defined the block above the block being clicked in its location. So now let's just go ahead and get the block, the actual block itself that's above the block being clicked since we already have its location. So to do that, we just do block block above equals block above location dot get block. Pretty straightforward. We just got the block at the location of block above location. All right, so now this is where we check to see if the block is indeed a door. 
to do that, we do if block dot get type ID is equal to 64. So if the block being clicked is is equal to the data value 64. If you don't know what the Minecraft data values are, um, just go ahead and do a quick little Google, and you'll see what they are. Um, and it'll be pretty straightforward as well. Um, now let's also see if the the block above the block being clicked is a door. And to do that, just like the other one, we do block above dot get type ID is equal to 64. And then we open it up with a curly bracket. So now we need to check if the player has their permission door lock dot open. So if p dot has permission door lock dot open, open that up with a semicolon, not a semicolon with a curly bracket. But we don't really need to know if he has the permission. We need to know if he doesn't have the permission. To do that, just add an exclamation point, exclamation point before p dot has permission. All right. So within this, uh, we're just going to type. We're going to. So right now, we just said if he doesn't have the permission, we need to do something. So let's send him a message, letting him know that he can't interact with this store. To do that, you do p dot send message parentheses quotation mark or parentheses chat color dot red capital R E D plus quotation marks. You may not interact with this door. Finish that off with a semicolon. All right, so now make sure you import chat color. <clears throat> if he interacts with the door and he doesn't have the permission, a message in red will be sent to him saying you may not interact with this door. To cancel the event of the door opening, we just simply type event dot set canceled parentheses true. Okay, we are done. Okay, so as you can see, we have a few errors in the door lock, or just one error in the door lock.java. To fix this, we just type in public class player listener implements listener. Right up there, you press import, and then ta da, the error should go away over here. And it looks like it did. Um, even though there still shows an error sign above, that's just a glitch, I think. If I just save, it might fix, but I'm not sure. Yeah, there we go. It's gone. Um, also, I don't know why I did get server dot get plugin manager when we already defined a variable to shorten that. So instead of typing get server dot get plugin manager dot register events, just type pm dot register events. <clears throat> and there we go. It looks a lot nicer. Um, and the last thing we need to do is just make the plugin dot yml file, which is literally six lines.